All right, we are live. We are going to do our Q&A a little bit earlier today because there's lots of questions and um, we probably won't finish them all. The last time I looked, there was 17. So I have about an hour and a half. We're going to do our Q&A on the World War III webinar that I uh, gifted you guys that I'm not finished with. Uh, you know, obviously, as we move further and further in this ascension process, the downloads are just kind of coming in. So I'll probably just keep adding to it until it becomes kind of like a series, um, like the real news, right? So I'm just pulling up your questions right now, guys. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, let's go to the beginning here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lots of good questions. Okay. All right, uh, we already got eight of eight of you guys here. So let me let me kind of brief you on how this is going to go. Um, so I've invited the Galactic Federation to be with us today. Um, and so at any given point, they might jump in and have say something specifically to someone or something in regards. It may be off topic if it feels in alignment. This is a, a kind of a good conversation because when you ask, it's always given. And sometimes when I'm just kind of relaying a message, I have a tendency to sugarcoat certain things um, out of, of the importance of not bringing up too much fear in, in lightworkers because we really need to stay physically focused in love and we need to be really about our vibration and our frequencies. So just just because someone has information does not mean they should be sharing it unless it's relevant to the solution that they can truly provide, which means if you guys are sharing information on Facebook, that's just fear reporting, fear reporting, fear reporting, fear reporting. Even if you believe it to be true, are you that different than CNN? So if you have an opportunity to fear report and then create a solution with it, then you are not going to create karma for yourselves because light workers, just because you're aware of what's happening in the dark does not mean you're supposed to now put everyone else in fear about it. You're supposed to have the responsibility to provide a solution or you shouldn't be saying it. Okay, that's my two cents. All right, let's dive into our first question. Mm, everybody can hear me okay? Everybody can see me okay? All right, so, um, ooh, all right. So Kathy says, what changes do you see coming to our crappy legal system? Okay, so your legal system will be completely, completely redesigned. Every aspect of your conscious collective has been laced with fear control programs. Your entire reality is built on the aspect of controlling your intuition, everything. Okay, so from the laws that you abide by to the limitations that you are responsible for uh, honoring to the um, personal integrity through the legal system that you are asked to appear to will all quickly within the next probably year be replaced with a more alignment system of guardian and mentoring. So we're going to kind of get rid of our global legal system as it was created to control you. So as this new kind of platform of governorship moves in, it will be about educating and taking personal responsibility within yourself to abide by more of a universal understanding and um, commandments of love. So it will be going back to cause and effect, treat others how you want to be treated. And because ego will be a, you know, 50% less on the planet in the coming months, then we will not have to contain our own behavior because of our urges and shadows that they have taught us are the reason why we need a legal system. Because if you look at every bit of the legal system, it is designed to fully protect the powers that be. Your rights are very, very limited in any outcome. And the rights that have been created on this planet for the legal systems to follow are always in alignment with the victim 
and perpetrator energies. It has not ever been in alignment with those that are taking personal responsibility. So imagine a governed system, because I won't even say legal, I will say a governed system where everyone is fully responsible for their own well being, their personal ethics that are agreed upon by the collective and community that they partake in. And this will begin and already has been happening since the 30s. We have already begun to really take a dent in the construction of this matrix. The 30s is when the work really, really began in this uh, physical realm. We've been working underground and up above and in parallel realities for the last 2000 years, preparing ourselves for what is happening right now. And since the 30s, we are literally chipping away and we were getting down to the roots right now. And that's why it hurts. That's why it's uncomfortable. That's why you feel so repressed. That's why you feel so limited because you're actually witnessing what kind of power they've had over you this whole time. See, as long as you've been comfortable and safe, you haven't really questioned their power unless you've been in the courtroom. And so for those of you who have been in the courtroom, you can see the injustice that lies within you. You can see that the, the corporate industry of our legal system has always been about business and money and control. It has never been about your free will. It has never been about your safety. It has never been about your integrity and it has never been about your freedom ever. So this all has to crumble. This all has to be decompartmentalized and rebuilt from the ground up. We already have a new justice system. That, that word decoded means just us, which means we were providing our own governorship and our own kind of understanding of world unity in a completely different platform. So everything that you know of as now will completely change. So everything will change, everything. Everything will be in the aspect of duality. So what you can't do now because you can't trust yourself, therefore you gave your power away to your government, you will be recoded within yourself and you will have self-trust and intuition. So you won't have to worry about not trusting yourself, which means you won't need a governorship to hold you accountable to your own behavior. Your behavior will be the justice system, all right? And our education system will come from a reflection of of a more of an animalistic type of primal space of watch me do this, I'll show you how to do this, I'll remind you how to do this, because it's all inherited inside of the consciousness of how to do all things, because nothing is ever learned, everything is always remembered. So if everything is always remembered, we just need the right examples to remember. So the children coming in will be taught through remembering, not from learning, not from repression, not from uh, a textbook that includes lies and, and um, corruption based in moving children away from their intuition. So schools will be completely reconstructed at the same time. Okay, so all things are going to go bye bye. Okay. All right, Erica says, you said 90% of leaders in the world are part of the dark seas. Can you please comment on countries that currently are against US policies and refuse to be part of the world's monetary system is such as Iran? Which sides are they working for? Okay. So first thing you have to understand is there is corruption in every aspect. There is corruption in every aspect of this planet. There is no sovereign, there is no fully enlightened countries. There are no fully enlightened anything. There is darkness within every aspect of your collective, every aspect, even the places and countries and governments that are in disagreement with the world order or with the um, banking institutions or the way that wars are funded or who owns the drugs and who owns the lands. There is corruption in every aspect of your collective, in every country, in every military, in every government, in every community, in every household. So there is no sovereign, ethical, completed places yet. Okay, that's why the seeds are here. That's why we have come. It is our job to be so spread out all over the world 
that we may infiltrate from the inside. So we have all taken jobs in different platforms in third dimensional reality to wiggle our way into a broken system. Yes, we may be bitching and moaning about it the whole time, but we have been holding space and holding light because we're breaking it out from the inside. We are in the IRS, we are in the banking institutions, we are in the government, we are in politics, we are in, in the medicine department, we are in the pharmaceutical industries, we are in the food growth, we are in um, aviation and military, we are in the schools, we are in the families. There are seeds in every component of your corrupted system and it is going to take time. So when you say, well, I need to know who I can trust and I need to know, you know which team I'm on, you are on team you. You are creating your universe from the inside out and only you can be accountable to the counsel that you keep. Your intuition will tell you that your guidance can never come from outside of you again. You cannot honor and listen to any part of your government. Even if we do have light seeds working in our government right now to bring change, your job is to fully trust your guts, your heart, your threshold of believability of what you believe is possible in your infinite possibilities of your own universe, not your mind. Your mind is grasping on to look for things it can trust and identify with and you can trust nothing. You can't even trust me saying this right now. What you have to do is you have to trust you. What you could create what you could visualize, what you could incorporate into your daily routine to self-govern yourself back to light. What aspects of your shadow need to be integrated that you're afraid of your own government? What aspects of your own shadow can you move into alignment, especially you in particular, really needs to work through the divine masculine shadow that you're holding within you of a form of control that limits your ability to honor your own choice and stand in your own power. It isn't about you giving up on what is. It is about you stepping in and saying, what would I prefer to see? Because the guardians of the light, the children of the sun, the star seats, the council, the galactic federation teams that are here and working now are here to bring the light from inside of ourselves and infiltrate. I'm gonna say that probably in every single question that's asked today, because that is the only way that we will move into this ascension with Mother Earth as quickly as she is moving. If we want to keep pace with how fast she's going, we have to let go of any idea that anyone is coming to save you. You have to let go to the fact that you can trust anything outside of you, not from a place of fear or pain, but a place of choice and decision. What would I prefer to see? What would I prefer to know? What would I prefer to live? How would I prefer to experience my reality? What freedoms do I have? What abundance do I have? What shadows can I go work on within that create fear outside of me? Who am I judging outside of me that I could take full responsibility for existing within me? These are the questions that we need to be asking because there is corruption in every single country, in every single neighborhood, in every single household. You know, you grew up in one, didn't you? You grew up in a household with corruption. You grew up in a house where there was a pedophile. You grew up in a house where there was manipulation and control and abuse. You grew up in that space, in your little tiny collective, you witnessed exactly what is spread out throughout this whole entire third dimensional reality we call the collective of earth. And we are slowly from the inside out, we are becoming light and light infiltrates darkness through awareness, through reminding of love, through the aspect of the God spark. We are here to become sovereign. We are here to step into our light. We are here to step into our power. So just know that you cannot trust anything except yourself. Now, if you identify with someone in politics who seems to be moving in alignment with your sacred belief systems and your identities, then you may flow power and energy to that perspective, knowing that it is a fractal of your own consciousness knowing that we are all one, that there is only oneness here and there is only one shadow. So if we are tapped into the shadow, it is our shadow. If we are tapped into love, we are tapped into our love. So it is your choice. Are you going to support those who seem to be supporting the earth? Or are you going to support those by being afraid of who and what you can trust? Because there is corruption in every part of this collective. Underground, overground, midground, parallel realities, past, present, future, it exists because you are in a state of duality and you are here to choose.
Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> Ingrid says, in order to end the game or to simply go to the next level outside of duality, we need to work on ourselves and raise our kundalini. How do we do that? Is that the same work that accessing to the Akashic Records? Okay, so I have a very specific, very specific assignment to give you. And obviously this is what we're doing in our Vision Quest workshop is in order for you to raise your personal frequency and vibration to the point where you can affect the greatest amount of change just by existing, your own personal value of just existing, how can you move into alignment with your own personal frequency and vibration? Your job, drum roll, is to work on the shadows and darkness within you. You have to deep dive into your own consciousness and find the devil, the demon within, demons within. You have to find those fractal consciousnesses that are still vibrating in the vibration of lack, loss, pain, suffering, betrayal, right? You have to find those aspects within yourself and that will remove the density in your field and you will lighten up. And when you lighten up, you will illuminate more. You will be the greatest effect that you can have and create because you will become untouchable. The only way that you could be hurt, the only way that you could be touched, the only way that you could be manipulated, the only way that you could be stolen from, the only way that you could be taken is if you are a vibrational match to that within your field. So if you remove those things and ideas within yourself and you clear the shadows within yourself, yes, go into your Akashic Records and your command to go into the Akashic Records is take me to my lifetime where I was, boom. Whatever and whatever you're seeing outside of you, ah, disgusting pedophiles, take me to my lifetime where I was a pedophile. Oh my God, disgusting people eating babies. Take me to the lifetime where I'm currently doing that. Take me to the lifetime where I am hurting women and children. Take me to the lifetime where I have been hurt by this. Take me to this lifetime. Your commandment of your Akashic records with deep breaths and intentions will take you anywhere into your universe. You will meet yourself in the mirror. You will integrate that back into love. I see you. I hear you. You're safe. You're loved. You can come home. You integrate into my heart. I take you back to that place of beginning. And I reconcile my own fragments because you are like a piece of amazing of a vase of beautiful prismed energy that has been shattered throughout the universe and there are yes the big pieces of you have come home but there are shreds of glass that remain hidden under the corners and underneath your refrigerators and underneath your 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 walls that are fractals of unconscious shadow that need to be reconciled within your own being for you to lighten up to a place where you can become untouchable how do you find them? You ask your Akash to take you there. You ask your subconscious mind, take me to my pain, take me to my unresolved karma, take me to this lifetime. You will go in the journey. You will find it through deep breaths, awareness, and getting rid of judgment of yourself that this isn't real. Your imagination is the only thing that is real. This is all a simulation. It is all a dream. You are all here in a training simulation to move back to source energy. You are here to collect yourselves. You are here to collect your fragments of your own darkness and integrate them into the light. That is the only thing the ascension actually is, is you are finding you in the dark. You are not finding demons. You're not finding pedophiles. You're not finding corrupt governments. You're finding yourself. You're finding yourself in each one of these aspects and you're bringing them back into your heart, into love. And you will soon to remember that your heart is a touch screen and you will be able to navigate this and go into any time and space that you choose to through your conscious awareness and choice. But it is your job. If you wanna save this planet, save yourself. If you wanna enlighten this planet, enlighten yourself. If you wanna rid this world of darkness, rid yourself of darkness. The divine masculine, is in great suffering right now. They are very much struggling to choose the light. They are moving into their divine feminine aspects where they are being asked to feel something they have given up for millennia. They have given up the ability to feel for a very long time. And the ones of you who are listening to me now, the masculine energies, I know you have found salvation in your medications. I know you have found salvations in your opiates. 
I know you have found salvations in your meditations and your addictions and your avoidances, but it is time for you to return to your intuition. It is time for you to make peace with the darkness within your heart and know that your only job, divine masculine, is to forgive yourself. That is it. It is time for you to forgive yourself. I forgive myself for not knowing what I didn't know when I didn't need to know it and how I didn't need to know it. If you chose a male body in this incarnation, you have forgiveness work. Divine feminine, if you have chosen a female body in innocent incarnation, you are here to forgive. You are here to forgive the divine masculine. You are here to support them in their evolution. You are here to hold space and nurture them while they go through this remembering. They need to remember what love is. All right. So with that being said, your kundalini energy will only rise when you are ready to be that kundalini energy. Because your life is not a fraction of your thoughts. It is your state of being that holds your absolute consciousness vibration, which means the dominant vibration that comes out of you is who you believe you are. So this kundalini energy that will rise is the remembrance of God, and it is the Christ consciousness itself embodying the human form, working with every chakra, every organ, every aspect of your blood, your bones, the rhythm of your energy field will become when you move back into alignment with being able to hold space for yourself, look into the darkest parts of your own soul, co collect the fragments of those pieces of shard glass, bring them back home to you, and then act as a change that you want to see in the world. Be the example. Be the light in the dark. Be what you know you can be. Your job is not to storytell on earth. Your job is not to tell on your brothers and sisters in the dark. Your job is not to be a tattletale. Your job is to be the solution to take responsibility, the ability to respond to your own heart, your own broken hearts, humans. You all have a broken heart. It is how you have gotten through and survived this world. It has made you weak and tired. You've constantly given your power away for the simple joys and pleasures. You have followed suit of the fear patterns and you have starved yourselves. Therefore, become very codependent on your matrix system. Where are you codependent on your matrix system? That needs to be looked at right now before you move forward. Anywhere you are codependent on your matrix systems needs to be resolved through your Akashic records, through your own guidance, or through your mentor's guidance, or through your teacher's guidance, or through your book's guidance, or your music's guidance, or whatever you're using to mirror back your conscious reflection to help assist you in your own blind spots at this time and space. It is your job to find those pieces. If you're going to tattletale, tattletale on yourself. All right, some major tough love going on here. Okay, <laughs> uh, how do you access, I'm just gonna go at how do you access, how do you access the Akashic Records? Um, when I teach how to access the Akashic Records through the quantum formula, it is a commandment. I am that I am that I am. But if you need some help guiding you into the records, um, I believe that I've got that in the I am training. I believe that I've even probably got that in the warrior training. And I probably can imagine that you could go online to any YouTube platform and say, you know, Akashic Records meditation and help get yourself in there. So your information and your assistance is abundant. There is nothing that you're unassisted by. If there is someplace you want to go, either I have said it, another teacher has said it, or you can find 50,000 different ways to do it on YouTube. Please use your time wisely to dive within instead of researching what is going on without you. You already know what is going on over there because you are part of you is living over there. There's a part of your fractal consciousness that is partaking in some of these devilish, demonic, satanic experiences. Your job is to find that within yourself. All right. Okay, here we go. We're rolling. Chandra says, 
who are these 10% world leaders who are on our team? I wanna watch them as I mirror into myself. I say that's giving your power away, Chandra. I would say that you are the 10%, okay? So here's the thing. All of you are working on trust. You're working on trusting yourselves. You have basically been misled your entire reality. And so you have been taught away from trusting yourselves, most importantly, and you have given your trust to those who have basically raped and stolen from you. So you have two wounds, the wound where you gave up your own trust and the wound where you gave up trust to those who have hurt, raped, and pillaged you throughout your life, like a siphon, like a slow drain. They have been slowly draining your energy field, your entire life, and you're starting to realize that. So your human emotion might be that you're pissed off and you wanna know who you can trust and who you can call on and who you can watch on the news and who you can vote for. Well, my vote is that you vote on yourself. My vote is that you vote on this consciousness within you and you become the politician that you seek, you become the governor that you seek, you become the president because your president Trump will be the last American president in the history of the world. You will never again have a history president who is in charge through a puppetry of command your well-being. Why is this all taking place in the United States? Because the United States prophesied by Saint Germain and the second coming is that the United States broken down is the new Jerusalem and the words USA exist in the middle of that word Jerusalem. So you have faith in the man that they call Trump who is a guiding light, who has been working undercover since the day he was born, who is taking on a very, very big job of being in the society, the secret societies, on the plantations, in the island spaces, has been watching and studying this since he was a young man, not affiliated with the seven families, not affiliated with the seeds of darkness, but lots of experience in the dark, lots, lots to resolve within his own being, lots of misfortune within his own shadow. He has a lot to do, he has a lot of space to hold, but his karmic resolve on this planet is to bring the light. So do not judge him, Judge the part of you that's judging him. Work through that interior judgment. Can you trust everyone in his political party? Absolutely not. The ones who work with your president called Trump are working with the Galactic Federation of Light. This Galactic Federation of Light is holding space. It's basically vetoing many, many things that you will never ever know about. It's creating opportunities that didn't exist. We're opening doors where there was walls and we're shutting down walls that have been open to all of you, which means your so-called freedoms will change in the coming years. Your ego will be disrupted at first when your world collapses and moves into a new alignment, but you will be moving into a platform of utopia on heaven on earth, unity, compassion, empathy will be the guiding space of your so-called legal systems and you will move into the threshold of knowing that you are the power that you seek. So you, Chandra, who is asking, what can I trust? What are these 10%? The 10% are the light seeds on the planet working incognito, who most of you don't even know you are. Most of the ones who are praying to the light, who are doing the meditations, who are sending the children love, who are working on their inner child, don't even know who you are, because if you knew you are, you would get distracted. So you've got to play this game incognito just like your president did. He doesn't even really understand who he is. There's a lot of cloning and there's a lot of AI going on. So you cannot look at anyone and make a judgment. You must feel. You must feel how you feel about the essence when you see something. Not after you read 10 people's opinions about it. When you feel them. If you're in disgust, what part of yourself? needs to be reconciled. If you are in neutrality, you are in the right alignment to be able to bring peace to this planet because another word for neutrality is new to my reality. Another word for new to my reality is peace. The higher self within you vibrates at the frequency of peace. Where do you feel peace in your life? You feel peace in your nature. You feel peace with your animals. You feel peace with your children. You feel peace with each other. Like-minded soul family. This is your sanctuary. 
This is where you find relief. This is where you rest your bodies. You do not rest your bodies in the collective matrix as you are being siphoned away from your power. Do not give your power away and look to guidance. Understand that everyone is playing a very specific part on planet Earth right now to overthrow and remove the contrast that has basically already taken over. You have to understand, humans, that this is not a win-win situation from a few different platforms. The darkness is infiltrated in everywhere. We literally have to go in and create a huge intervention. We are going to need every one of you to look deep within your souls and find the love that you have buried, the hearts that have been broken within you, the anger that soothes within you, the terrified nature of your inner child. And you need to reconcile that soul within you. That is the only way that we can create true salvation. Now, love has one. Four probabilities, love has one. One probability is that the light workers themselves are responsible for the fall of earth. Do you want that kind of burden? If you give into the fear, if you give your power away to your politics, if you give your power away to your money, if you give your power away to the things that you do not love and do not bring you joy because you need them, you are feeding the darkness. You must move into alignment with your own truth and power. Fear is a myth. Fear is false. Fear is an epidemic. It is a virus. It is a poison. There is no virus on this planet. There is only fear. Fear and mind control. Your minds are not safe when you're in the collective. So who is governing your mind? Who is governing your mind? Is it the collective? Is it your news? Is it your Facebook? Is it your YouTube? Or is it you? Because you know the truth of who you are. That's why you came. You chose a male body for this reason. You chose a female body for this reason. You have an inner child who stays in complete neutrality of who and what anyone has done, holds absolutely no grudges, holds no pain except the desire to love and be loved. So where can you become love? So this 10% is the light workers. 90% of, you can see the odds are not in our favor, guys. 90% dark seeds on this planet, okay? 10% light. Now, a lot of the 90% has been fallen angels who have just continued to incarnate, 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 and incarnate. And every time they give their power away, and every time they choose addiction over awareness, and every time they abuse and hurt each other, they stay in the cycle of the earth incarnation and act as a food source. So not all 90% of these of the energy on earth is bad. A lot of it is caught in the middle. A lot of it is caught in the, the, um, the web. A lot of it is stuck. A lot of it is acting out in survival issues, not necessarily choosing the dark from a place of free will, but having to choose the darkness out of survival and need and codependency. So the, your dear loved ones, your family members are not dark seeds. They are a product of the darkness. They are birthed out of the darkness. They are stuck in that hallucination that they are stuck here. Why do you think they birthed you into their family dynamic? Because they are asking to go home and the only way that they can go home is to bring light into the dark. So through agreements, soul contracts, they birthed you into the family unit to disrupt and rip apart their illusions. You came to bring the conflict. You came to bring the changes. You came to bring the questions that they have to ask when your bodies look different and, and feel different and act different and choose different. They have to find a way to love you. And even if it takes them four lifetimes, they will find a way to love you because you were planted into the family unit in order to break the chain. That's why the second coming has been incognito. That's why none of us have really known who and what we are until now. That's why all of us have gone through the same path as the human. We have lost our value. We have become overwhelmed. We have become codependent. We have become an active participant and slave of the collective. We have given our money to support this satanic cult. We have fought 
for them. We have sent our boys to war to fight for them. We have given away our power and not even questioned it. Yes, we might have questioned it in our intuition, but never did we go up against it until we had an opportunity, until we had enough space, until we had the actual resurrection date of March 23rd, 2020, is when everyone got their coordinates. And it is time for us to step into the light. The resurrection has begun. The New Jerusalem, which is basically where the second coming will decide the earth's face is happening in the United States of America. Justice is what we seek and it is just us. So who and what can you do to be that 10%? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, we're rolling. Sonia says, if I am the universe, then I created the matrix. I created this entire computer program. Shouldn't I be able to change the rules of the game? reprogram it. If I created it, then I reprogram it. Shouldn't I be able to reprogram it? Totally change the rules of the game. 100%. 100%. The only thing that continues to keep the matrix here is your belief in it. The only thing that continues to keep the matrix here is your affinity towards it and your value towards it and your money towards it and your reality towards it. So when you say, I am my abundance, not my job. You remove yourself from the game and you start creating a universe within yourself. When you say I create my reality instead of my, re my, my reality creating my reality, then I begin to build a universe within myself. And as I stand in that truth and act as if and become the I am, walking, talking, acting, move, moving away from all physical codependencies throughout the matrix, I began to become completely unlimited within myself. And this universe that I create within me will begin to radiate out and it will begin to influence others who will choose the same type of universe that I am creating and we will and have created a new collective. We have been working for a very long time on this planet to create just that collective. We have been building the new earth inside the old world, earth. You build your new reality inside your old reality. You build it inside. So as you stop agreeing with everything, see, to the level of which you will create your own universe is to the level of which and who has your power. So if you say, I create my own reality, and you say, I am divine creator, and I am the abundance, and I am my wealth, and I am my health, and I am my intuition, and I am my knowing, and I am my mother, and I am my father, and I am God, and I am the earth. When you take on that responsibility and then say, yes, 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 but I need this help from the government, but I need this, that need energy, that need energy is the shadow realm within you. So deep down, dive down deep, go into that space of need. Ask yourselves questions like, what else could I do besides this? Could I make friends with farmers so I wasn't codependent on a grocery store? Could I grow my own food, right? Could I spend all of the money that I have in my 401k and create an amazing life for me so that when money disappears, at least I'm vibing until the new money line comes out. That's probably what I would do. I would create the major abundance for what you have worked very, very hard for in your life. I would bleed the matrix dry and give it no time and any attention to what is owed. I would move into absolute honoring of my divine deserving and i would milk the cow with no consideration for any justice going back into that space i would create a bountiful reality around me with everything that i would need to be completely self-sufficient i would make friends with other people that are self-sufficient i would make friends with other people who understood that they too were creating their own universe so our bubble could get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger from the middle until it pops. And all of those fractured souls that are playing the dark seeds roles will return back to the gardens of heaven and be forgiven and readmitted with all kinds of love. And it will be because of you. It will be because of you said, I create my reality. I create a loving environment. I am self-sufficient. I am independent. 
I am the creator. And therefore you will prove to yourself that people, places and things, food and bounty and money and properties will just show up for you. It will just show up for you. You've always had this power since you were a child. You knew how to pretend, you knew how to use your imagination. You knew what you were doing. Someone told you no. So go back to your yes and say, I deserve all things. I am all things and move into alignment with you are creator. Even if you are getting money and help from the government right now, move away from the need. Become as sufficient as you possibly can with the money that they're giving you and create a beautiful life for yourself. Create a beautiful body for yourself. Create a beautiful um, threshold of, of abundant materials that you may use while the world is going through its demolition process. Because when the demolition process goes by, the $200,000 that you have sitting in your 401k will not matter because it will disappear. So you might as well use it and move it into using it for what you want to have a sense of having, right? Because all of your material ideas of the matrix will disappear. You will not be in this, well, I got to work for my next paycheck to buy this. You will not have that. You will have abundance on the other side, the most amazing abundance. And the way to get to abundance is to be abundant now, to be and act in abundance now, to spend the money on your inner child, to spend the money creating protection and safety around you, to spend the money on play, elevate your vibration. Do not save it for a rainy day because guess what? It won't be worth anything and during the rain. It won't be worth anything. The only thing that will be worth something is your vibration. You are the diamond and what you have inside of you is all that's gonna matter on the other side. That's going to be your paycheck because it will not be what your last name is or what school you went to. All of those things will become obsolete and your paycheck will come from the universe itself in the form of mass bounty and abundance. So the way to get to abundance now is to be abundant, to spend the money on you, invest in you, create for you, build for you, have for you, make the biggest universe inside the bubble that you possibly can. And that will bring the abundance on the other side of the mirror. All right, mm -hmm. Dermot says, why is it that we incarnate, reincarnate over and over on earth, timeless, and yet there are other beings of light that have never experienced life on earth? We are all connected. We have some of us chosen and others not, question mark. So Dermot, there is only one being. There is only one being and all of us are fractal consciousnesses of that being. There is only one being. There is only one. We, in our own individual unique spectrums of focus, our ability to focus through consciousness at a different perspective, gives us the identity and the understanding that we are our own consciousness. Yes, we are physically focused, having a very unique perspective which, which we believe that we are individual, but we are absolutely collected and connected to the one divine, having a unique experience. And so just the analogy that I gave you as the beautiful vase that shreds into millions of pieces, the bigger pieces, they can remain intact, which means the angelic community is the bigger pieces that have remained intact. They hold a very large vibration that is very close to the one being's vibration of its true self. Now, the specks, the fragments, you know that even after you swept your floor and you've broken a cup, months after months after months of sweeping and washing your floor, you still step on glass. So those fragments that have laid underneath your, you know, wool boards and underneath your rugs and underneath your counters, are the ones who have gotten lost, so far displaced away from the collective and understanding of the one being that they believe that they are dark. They are believed they are disconnected. They believe they are abandoned. They are never seen. They are walked past every day. So they go into a traumatic PTSD incarnation sequence over and over and over again until the bigger part of them returns home to get them. You believe you're on this planet to, to fight the dark. You're here to find the fragments of your own soul that you abandoned in a different timeline because there is only you. So I am here with a bigger part of myself 
to find the smaller pieces of myself. And the smaller pieces of myself that actually want nothing to do with me because I, they believe that I have abandoned them. They believe that I have rejected them. I have to go underneath, underneath the counter to find them. And I have to integrate them back in until eventually we turn all back into that beautiful vase again of a fractal consciousness. The rainbow energy that some of you are starting to see in your dream states. Are you seeing the rainbow energy? Because that is what's on the other side of this. So the more fractal pieces of consciousness that you find that have been lost in earth incarnation for thousands of years, acting as a slave, being siphoned away from their God spark, are waiting for you. They're waiting for me. They're waiting for us to come collect them and bring them back home because they are more like brothers and sisters than they are dark. They are lost souls and it is our job to come and get them and bring them home and remind them of love and to remind them that they are whole, to remind them that they are not broken and to put ourselves back together. We are here to remember. We are here to remind, okay? All right, let's see what else we got here. Frank, Frank just says, just can you talk about false light? What underlies it? How shadow aspects within us express or play out false light? How false light comes from wounding how false life plays out in our realities, why we others are drawn in by it, why we choose to express it, how it is related to narcissism, what part, part false light plays now in the world stage. Whatever insights you have on this. Okay, so I've talked a lot about this in other classrooms. I can't remember where, but I'll, I'll kind of bring it back in and see if anybody wants to contribute here. Um, what false light is, is the opposite in the duality game of light, which means it has it's light that has forgotten that it's light. So there's no such thing as like false light, just like there would never be false light. Like me, you know, like a, you know, I guess you could call like a fluorescent light bulb, kind of like a false false light. And it's it it's all how that aspect of consciousness believes itself to be. So if I be in false light, I've literally had to believe myself into that. I don't just become it. There is never a moment where my I am not creating my reality, whether I'm choosing an aspect of false light or or light. In this aspect, let's call it um, the darkness within. So how you can spot dark light or false light is there will be a need attached to it. In pure positive source energy, there is never a need, ever. Need doesn't exist in true light. Need is not in existence of true light. So your gurus and your teachers and your coaches and your doctors and your lawyers and your politicians, if they are in a state of need, we need your vote. We need you to do this. We need you to act this out. We need you to wear a mask. We need you to say this. We need you to do this. That is your first understanding of false light. Need comes from lack, lack comes from suffering, suffering comes from separation, separation comes from abandonment, rejection of itself that re rejected God, that is now playing its needs out, siphoning the energy from the world. So your first understanding of what dark false light is, is a state of need. So when you hear your teachers and gurus speak, what do they need you to do? What do they need you to do right now? Do they need you to pay them? Do they need you to show up? Do they need you to be there? Do they need you to be a certain way? Because if they need, you're watching and witnessing the false light within themselves. Now, if they ask, if they say, you know, I'd really like to do this with you. I really see this potential within you. I really see the power within you. You could follow me. You could do as I'm doing. You could look in the mirror. I could hold space for you while you're in the darkness. That is not false light. That is demonstration and pure example. A need comes from lack. Need comes from a secret. There's a secret underneath the need. So let me ask you a question. You wanna find the dull and false light within yourself? What do you need? What do you need? Do you need people to show up for you? Do you need people to be there? Do you need people to love you? Do you need this money? Do you need this food? Do you need this attention? Do you need this security? Because the part of you that needs is this false light that you're terrified on the outside of. You're going to find the false light within yourselves by finding where your needs are. 
Need is the construction of your human ego. It came from need. It came from the word no. It came from limits. It came from denial and rejection of self. Your human ego is the false light within you. It is constantly navigating you into codependency. It's good navigating you away from your gut into your mind so that you can be controlled. It is navigating you to starve yourself so that you can be satisfied for instant gratification that will make you feel whole for about 30 seconds. It will will you into circumstances and events to lock you in to other areas of false light. It will manipulate you. It will siphon your energy field. So the way that you find this is you find your needs within. And how you find it in others is you find out what they need from you. You find out what they need from you. And the way that the narcissistic empath game is played on earth is the empath is the light worker, the narcissist is the dark seed, the narcissist is a wounded empath, a fallen angel who has lost its way, who needs the light from a light worker, an empath in order to sustain its own life force energy. And you know what it's time for us to do? It's time for us to starve them. That's the best way that we can bring everybody home is to starve them of fear, starve them of what they need. Just like you, in order to reset your human immune system, you put yourself through a three to seven day fast. That is the same thing that we need to do to the false light. We need to put our bodies in a disciplined, consistent order of movement, energy, light, and music, and nature. We need to be in these elements in order for us to sustain our own frequency. When you are in, need, in nature, you do not need. When you are filling your body with nutrition, you do not need. When you are in the right relationships, you do not need. When you are playing the abundance game within yourself, you do not need because you see that money comes from people, places, and events and circumstances, and it comes in all forms of giving and receiving. Every time you need it, it's showing up. You don't need. The part of you that needs is the part of you that needs to be healed. The part of you that's witnessing the need in others is the part of them that needs to be healed. And the part that triggers you is the part that you need to heal. The need of others, if it triggers you, it's because you need something yourself. You have to find the parts of yourself that you've abandoned that are needing you because that's the battery energy, the battery of need. I need, I need more power. I need to sustain. When all you have to do, drop into your heart, back to your guts, move into your root chakra where alignment is, Go back to unity and plug into the wall. Your electrical system, it creates all kinds of energy for your entire home without depleting itself. When it feeds your lamps, when it feeds your toasters, when it feeds your computers, it does not get weaker. It just creates more flow. Batteries, they drain. So find the battery part of you, which is your human ego, which hopefully you're dissolving in Jessica's vision quest because that will give you an opportunity to dive down deep into your false light, your walls, your imaginary blocks, your holographic experiences of limitness, and move back into creator energy and turn on your kundalini, turn on your life force energy, open up all of your chakras, activate your crystal DNA, and move into that space of superhuman abilities that you're all guaranteed to have if you focus within, okay? So hopefully that made sense to you, Frank. Zoe, if money is changing, going as we know it, should we be splurging? Absolutely, yes. How long have you got to spend what we have? Will it be complete financial collapse, as in one day? Is it here, next, gone, what? So because you're living in your own universe, Zoe, and I'm living in my own universe, that actually will look very different for each and every one of us. We will not all be experiencing that same experience, okay? Just as if some people are very devastated and they're going through financial crisis over this corona experience, and some of you are vibing. Some of you are, are, are more abundant than you have ever been right now. Some of you are, are milking the opportunity to not have to go to a job. You're loving the ideas of having to stay home more. So it depends on what universe that you're in will be what kind of reality that you create. If you can create a collective within yourself 
by the time this monetary system is moved away, a new one will be in its place and you will feel not any void or any lack or any need. You will transition. Here's the secret to transition from one level of abundance to the next. Here's the secret to be as abundant as you possibly can in the here and now because you will create the world out of that feeling. You will create your new world out of the feeling of abundance. And if it's sitting in the bank where someone else is using it to parlay the stock market, it is not doing your reality any good. Again, giving away your power. If it were me, I would take all of my money and I would create the most beautiful life that I possibly could. And I would create a self-sustainable system for myself. And I would give my inner child everything she's ever wanted. So no part of me was in need. And I would rise above my need. I would fully heal my ego. And I would move into where that new system already exists, Zoe. Because so many people are already utilizing the new monies. They're already living in the new economies. There's a whole parallel reality of human collective right now that have exited the matrix and are building and living in 5D waiting for us. They're waiting for us to come. So we hold on to this old program that's codependency and need. Am I saying spend every dollar that you have in your account? That has to be honored by your particular belief system. If you do not trust what I'm saying, do not honor that. If this sounds crazy to you, turn me off. I don't care. You have to do what's right for you, but creating the most abundant life that you possibly can is your job. Now, having money in the bank, if that feels abundant to you, leave it there because that's the abundant frequency you need. Putting it into a home that you know no one can take away from you, if that's the abundance you need, then do it. If you need to build out your van to make it more, you know, self-sustainable, do that. Will you lose your home? That depends on if you have dark shadows within you about losing home. I see that if we stand in our true essence and power and face the darkness within ourselves and move into abundance and move into grace and move into love and have faith that the new world is already here and waiting for us, then we will never, ever, ever feel more than a bump in the road as we're transitioning from one form of abundance to the next. But your level of abundance right now is going to be the game that you're playing on the other side. Do you want to be a royal or do you want to be a servant? Do you want to be a master or do you want to be a minion? Do you want to be a creator or do you want to be a, someone with your hand out? That is going to be what you're going to experience on the other side. So some people will experience a huge collapse. They will lose everything. They will return back to source energy. They will integrate their ego through harmony and pride crushing humility. And they will work their way back up to the frequencies or fast track biohack, you can step right into abundance right now, live the life that you know you can, invest in yourself, invest in your inner child, invest in your discipline and your consistent programs of moving your body into perfection of idea of self and become self-sovereign and basically ride the wave into 5D. Or you can get caught in the riptide. So it is your choice and it is your opportunity because you have free will on this planet and you can vibrate black and you can vibrate abundance and it is always your choice in every moment in every second of every of every idea so let go of the belief systems that this money is going to somehow get transformed for you if it's coming in siphons spend that money on yourself in siphons if you cannot pull it out because it's social security or something like that then when it comes in create as much abundance as you possibly can every month when it comes in eat the best foods go to the best places it's coming in and as long as you believe that it's coming in, it will continue to come in for you because it's not going to cut you off if you're in the vibration of harmony. If you're in the vibration of harmony with yourself, you will not get cut off from your social security. You will not get cut off from anything. You will actually probably get a huge amount of money instead of this monthly stipend when everything transforms and you will be able to, to live out your dreams with a chunk. That's a little hint for you guys. A chunk is coming for those who are abundant now. If you're waiting for this abundance, then you will be waiting on the other side. If you move into abundance now, you will get even more. The universe will match you tenfold if you choose abundance and love and honor and, and value now. It will match you. It will always bring you more than you have now if you do this work. All right? If you wait and see what happens, you'll be waiting to see what happens. Okay? All right. What time is it? 12 o'clock, we're doing good. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, Kathy, buy your dream house now. 
Okay, Chandra, right, loans be forgiven. Yes, loans will be forgiven. The IRS, as you noticed, is a corporate, it is a corrupt, unjust system. The IRS will be incarcerated. It will be completely shut down. The way that we will tend to our roads and highways and communities will look completely different. We will not be paying part of our hard-earned wages as slaves to go back to support systems that we don't really understand that are supporting. Okay, all right, so IRS is crumbling. Banking institution will be handed over into the right hands and reconstructed from the bottom up. Your personal value and personal level of how you see yourself will be the amount you will be given, okay? We will have full debt forgiveness, full debt forgiveness. Real estate is the only question right now that I don't have your full answer to because it's it's confidential material because it has to do with the stock market. And I'm not allowed to give you that information today until we move out of this full last energy portal. I will have more information for you in the coming weeks on your stock markets and your real estate. Hold tight on that. Know that if you feel as if you are a homeowner, if you move into the dark shadow of your program where you feel homeless and clear that program out, you will not be homeless on the other side. If you feel homeless, very important, I want you to go into your route. I want you to ask yourself, where do I feel homeless? Where do I feel alone? Where do I feel without home? Where do I feel without comfort? Where do I feel without nurturing? Where do I feel without protection? That is your dark shadow around your energy with your home. And I really would advise you all to clear that one out because you all deserve to live in the homes that you, that you can have. There is enough houses on this planet right now to give everyone the home of their dreams twice. Twice. There is no lack of homes. There are no lack of anything. And if you're saying, well, I own a home. I don't want someone to take my home and give it to someone else. That's a lack program you probably should work on right now. If you're giving away your home and you're moving into a home that you do not own, do not worry about the scenario and circumstances of that story. Move into what that home feels like to you. Does it feel like your home? Then you will have a home provided for you on the other side that's probably better than you're in right now. Do you need to own property? No, you do not need to own anything because everything owned is a myth. The only thing you own on this planet right now is your choice. Your body is tangible, the market is tangible, the banks are tangible, the real estate is tangible, you own your choice. Do you feel that you have a home? Work on that shadow majorly. Two shadows to work on this week. One, become the most abundant version of yourself and stop feeling homeless. Stop it. Move into alignment with your home. I don't care what you have to do or what coach you have to hire to help you get there. You do it and you find a home within and your home will be provided for you as a metaphor of what you believe you are. You will have exactly what you believe you are on the other side. So if you believe you are homeless now, then good luck. Wow, that was abrasive. Okay. Hopefully this is making sense to you guys because I'm catching like a third of this. All right, uh, Christine says, uh, yes, I'm wondering about the same questions. Should I run my credit cards up to the max if debt is going away? What is the time frame if all needs will be met? Will people still have jobs or even go to work? If they do lose their love their jobs and what they do, how does the whole money game change? What should we be doing now in preparation if anything just? Okay, so Christine, there's a little bit of a shadow in this question. There's like you're asking for permission and I'm going to tell you right now that your vibration is the permission. So should you be running your credit cards up? I think that that question falls in your own belief system. How codependent are you? How codependent are you on the government? How codependent are you on your job? How codependent are you on your paycheck? The level of codependency that you have indoctrinated within your own being is a direct reflection of how much you can spend. If you know that you're getting paid from God because you're doing God's work and that the universe is actually paying you through people, places, and things, you can do whatever you want with your money. 
You can rack up as much debt as you want. You can do whatever you feel integrity of if you know you're divinely supported. But if you do not feel divinely supported and you act in taking yourself into debt, which does not feel good, you will face the consequences of that feeling. You guys, your actions mean nothing. It's the feeling attached to it. You could go buy 10 properties if you wanted. You could stop paying your student loans, which you're allowed to do. You could milk. You could empty your bank account. You could rip apart your 401k. You can charge up all the debt. If you know, and this is so important, who the hell you are. If you know you're God creating it and you don't have a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be divinely supported, go for it. Go for it. Go live your best life, right? YOLO, it's all good. But if you don't, you have to honor the integrity of your codependent belief systems. And it would be a good idea for you to drop into your shadow realm and clear all codependencies that you have with any part of the collective of we call the matrix, okay? Because it is your belief that determines your reality, people. It is your frequency. And if you're spending money going, oh, because your question, I found your shadow in your question. Your shadow in this question, and I will read for everyone to hear, what is the time frame? Does everyone feel that contraction? Because if I spend this money now, what's going to happen? That feeling of if I spend it all now, am I going to run out? Is there going to be enough time? Am I going to have enough time to spend all this money and then Go without before everything is created. That's the shadow I want all of you to look at right now because most of you have that shadow. This is not just Christine. This is all of you. She asked this question for all of you. This question is for all of you to sit in. Do you believe that that trapeze idea of having to move in and let go, what does the uncertainty feel like for you? What shadows of need does it bring in? Because that question was loathing and we need. It was so in need. Like, what's the time frame? What's the time frame? How long do we have? Well, I'm going to tell you guys, guess what? Light workers, we, dis, we dictate, we dictate the time frame. The faster we can move out of fear is instant manifestation. Instant manifestation because there are already is a community arriving on the other side, guys, going, where is everybody? This party needs to get started, but it's a frequency vibrational belief system game, guys. The only way out is in, and the only way through is to honor and look at the belief systems that you're holding on to. You cannot be afraid and go spend all your money. You have to be in abundance frequencies to spend money, which is I deserve, right? I am valuable. I am free. I am safe to spend all of this. Those are your frequencies that your Jessica gave you. Those are your frequencies that you need to honor and make sure that they all hit the mark with love before you access all aspects of your financial security that you have tied with the matrix. Now, if you feel in righteousness, do it. Because if you do feel complete, you will triple your money. You will be betting on black. You will be putting it all right there. You'll be throwing the craps, craps game and you will win the big lottery as long as you don't need it, right? Those who gamble, who hit big numbers, they hit big numbers because they don't need to win. They're doing it for the love of the game. Love your secret frequency. If you're going to love spending this money, love will multiply. If you're afraid to spend this money, don't spend it until you move into alignment. Don't do it. Don't listen to this and be like, well, Jessica said I could go buy it, take my 401k out. No. Jessica said, make sure your vibration is in the right place and then create the most am amazing abundance that you possibly can. And stop worrying about receiving help, you guys. If your parents are paying for your bills right now or if your partner is paying your bills, say thank you because they are in a soul contract to support your light work. Stop worrying about receiving. Stop it. You can have. If people say, yes, I want to give, then you take it. You have to start receiving. You have been cutting the universe off since you were five years old, stopping. As soon as you reach the platform of self-love at your five year cycle, you said no thank you to the universe and you have not been receiving since. It's time for you to say yes to the universe. I deserve to play. I deserve to have what I have. I deserve to have beautiful things. I deserve to have beautiful places. I deserve to be around beautiful people. I am worthy because I am here now holding space for the planet. That's what makes me worthy. That is my value. 
is how much I work on my own shadow is my personal value and I am abundant. So watch your, watch your fears hidden in your questions, guys, because they are telling the truth of your darkness and your darkness is, I want to believe you, but I'm scared. Then don't pull the trigger. Wait until you neutralize the fear, then pull the trigger. And live a beautiful life because you deserve it, all of you. Okay, what time are we? Um, okay, Lacey, she says, I just saw on Fox News, why are we watching Fox News? That a new rule is to wear a mask at home alone during sex and on Zoom calls. I would love more insight on the connection between wearing a mask, how it creates lack of oxygen and how that keeps us in high beta frequency, which makes us more compliant and keeps us living in fear and what we can do consciously to play the game without succumbing to the fear. So your whole virus thing and your whole mask thing is a metaphor. And this is very important that you understand this. Now, everything that's happening in the collective is both happening from a light perspective and a dark perspective. It's not all dark. Trust me, you wanted this virus. You wanted and needed this story of the virus because it stopped your addiction to busy. It stopped you running from your past. It got you present. It got you home. It stopped your rat race. It brought you back into your creativity through boredom. It reminded you of the inner child because you were looking at them all day long. You needed this virus. So, from a, a understanding of a duality, the grand darkness used the virus as a form of control and always in a good chess game, the opponent would take the move of the dark and turn it into light. And that is exactly what has happened. We have turned this dark move into light from a depopulation simulation of a virus that was created that the human body is pretty much immune to when if it's in a healthy state because our vibration is too high to actually get sick enough to do what they thought was gonna happen in the labs, that then they needed to put another form of control on us to make us believe that the virus was more dangerous than it actually is. And so they created the second virus, which is the virus of indoctrination of control of our physical presence of us forcing and mandating us to wear a mask. Now, I'll go into both metaphors for you. So the metaphor of the mask for the dark is to shut down your truth frequencies, which is you speaking your truth, right? You have a mask on, you're, more, more, you're less likely to talk to each other. Having to stay six feet away from each other, now your energy fields are not sharing space and you're not communicating through the heart as much, okay? Unless your field is really big, which I hope most of you guys are. So that is one way that they're stealing and siphoning your power is to get you to not speak to get you to not interact through your energy field communications, right? To, um, to not have the natural flow of your oxygen, to basically create kind of a toxic space within your own field, right? To try to slow you down. There, there, you guys, the mask, it was designed to slow down your awareness. That's it, that's all it is. But, but, but what it has done is it has really clearly defined for all of us what part of the population is in fear and what part of the population is still working incognito. And you can see that if anyone is listening to what Fox News said, they have completely given up their power to the dark. Now they work for the dark. So now they're gonna get mad at you when you're not complying. All right. So anyone who would take the advice of Fox News and wear a mask during sex in their own home, right, deserves what they get. They're a vibrational match to whatever happens to them. So be it. That's the game they choose to play. We love them. We wish them love. We'll hold space for them when they're ready to come home to the light. We'll be here, but we don't judge them. They're making a solid choice. But everything is always a negative in disguise, you guys. Everything is always a shortcut. The virus has been a shortcut 
You guys understand that us not flying planes all around the world is saving millions of children. The transport has slowed down. The reason the transport needed to slow down is we needed to see how everything was truly being shipped. We needed to see the underground railroads. We needed to see the flight patterns that are not on the books. We need to see the military that's not doesn't have a social security card. We need to see the planes in the air that are not supposed to be flying. We need to be able to see. So we had to turn everything off and let the darkness highlight itself. So do not fret if you cannot fly to a foreign country right now. It is in your best interest to navigate your own universe and build utopia from the safety and sanctuary of your beautiful home that you should be creating right now in a body that feels strong, vibrant, and youthful. That is where your travel should be right now. It is for your best good so that we may hold those accountable that have been under the radar and underground facilitating all of the power on this planet for thousands of years. So that is why you are in isolation. Not that you shouldn't be leaving your houses and fighting against your so-called governments with your acts of freedom. You honor your belief systems in that area, but understand that every negative is a shortcut. Now, you only have to wear the mask to honor your community guidelines. You do not have to wear the mask inside your home and stop believing everything you're hearing. And I know, Lisa, you are not hearing, you are not listening to that. But you guys, even being around news is so detrimental to your energy fields. You are being influenced whether you believe what they're saying or not, because they are using a form of frequency and vibration to bypass your conscious awareness and drop right into your subconscious. Your subconscious records 24 seven. It does not discern whether something is right or wrong. It merely collects, it collects data. So if it's constantly collecting data and you hear something and go, I don't agree with that, it's still in your body now. And now you have to deal with it. So you have to really make sure that you are honoring your field about what you are taking in. If you have a spouse, that is literally watching news 24 seven, that would be calls for divorce. I'm, obviously I'm being dramatic, but that would be a deal breaker for me, a deal breaker. Now that's my personal aspect because you can be responsible for your frequency and vibration, but they cannot. And they are literally saying yes to mind control every day. I would really stand in my power and say, not in my house. Not in my house, not on my watch, absolutely not. You don't need to understand my reasons why. I'm not gonna tell you that you're being mind controlled because you don't believe me. But what I'm gonna say that it just makes me feel bad. Do you want me to feel bad? Because it makes me feel icky. If you wanna watch the news, you can go out to the garage or go into the basement or go to your friend's house or go to the bar and you can watch the news. But in my home, you really need to start taking your power back. There should be absolutely not one shred of news anywhere in your home right now. And if you have negative news on your Facebook feeds and your social media feeds, shame on you because you are saying yes to that and as going into your subconscious and your inner child is having to deal with that. How are you gonna be able to come to become stubborn and truly abundant when your inner child is constantly being medicated through frequency and vibration that you're trying to outcreate through your physical reality? It's impossible. You cannot be in a toxic environment and raise your vibration constantly because you become allergic to it. And when you become allergic to it, you become inflamed to it and you become angry towards it, you become grateful for it, and then you lose yourself. And now you're in a bad wagon and now you're down a rabbit hole and you're fight, you're, you may be telling a different story than Fox News is, but you're still telling a bad story and who's right and who's wrong. Go into nature, go to the high frequencies, eat the beautiful foods that, this, that Mother Earth has created for you. Go to the running water. Go sit in moving water. Listen to music that uplifts your soul. Spend time with people that make you feel good about you. You, not them. Make them feel good about you. Spend money. Spend time on creating abundance and freedom. Get away from the noises. Get away from the cities. Get away from the, the, the toxic energy that you're constantly around. You will not you think you're big enough. You're not. You're not big enough to sustain this until you clear all the darkness within you. The only way for you to be a bright light in the middle of a toxic world is to have no shadow. And if you have a shadow, 
Like attracts like, and you will be drawn like a moth to a flame to the darkness. You'll be drawn and you'll be interested and you'll say, I just want to be informed. And that will be part of your indoctrination and you will secretly be working for the darkness and not even know it. So you will be creating a reality where you will have to deal with that karma on the other side. So what I would say is deal with that energy now within. Start having excellent boundaries, right? Start honoring yourself over anybody outside of you. Start listening to yourself, right? Self-sovereign, okay? And what you share on Facebook, you better be ready to deal with the consequences of the karma. If you feel it is your important right to share negative energy without a solution, you will deal with the consequences because it is cause and effect. And everything in this universe is wired on cause and effect. It is not you're in trouble. It is that you will reap what you sow. All right. Okay, Rebecca. Mm, okay. <laughs> Pamela says hilarious image of death certificates suffocating during. Okay. Um, Christine Withrow says, and Lacey says, yes, the rules around masks are ridiculous. And how do we not participate if we are supposed to follow along and wear the masks or be judged, shamed, humiliated if you don't wear the masks? Because the that is 100% of the sheeple are focusing, continuing the division. I already answered this in class, Christine, but I'll answer this again. So you are here to be, you are here to be God incognito. All right. So you are here to follow the rules. You are here to follow the rules and not agree with them, right? You are here to break what rules you can and play your incognito role. I would much rather you wear your mask and go stand in a grocery store and, spend, and send everybody in there light and love while you're grocery shopping wearing your mask than walk into the grocery shop and bitch and moan that you have to wear a mask. You see the two difference in vibrations there? Are you really going to be God incognito or are you going to be part of the problem? Because if you walk in and go, this mask and I have to follow the rules, that's a shadow inside of you. Your old authority issues, your old, you have to find something within yourself because who cares if you have to wear a mask to go to the grocery store for 10 minutes? You're not wearing it 24 seven. You're not wearing it in your home. You're not wearing it in nature. You got to wear it to get your nails done. You got to get it to get your grocery shopping. You got to go walk into a restaurant and then take it off. It's not that big of a deal. But if you have an issue with it, that's your shadow. Remember, your job is to be out in the world supporting small businesses right now. So wear the freaking mask and love your neighbor and send everyone light. And if you are worried about humiliation or judgment, that's your shadow that needs to be resolved because nobody's actually looking at you unless you're expecting them to look at you because there is only one being. There is only one being and we're all reflected around, all looking at each other through the spectrum of the mirror. And therefore, if you wear the mask, and you use it as an opportunity to get out into your world and play an incognito light role and send everyone there, love and light, you are doing your job. If you get out in the world and you bitch and moan, what are you a vibrational match to? Solution or problem? Which team are you playing on? You got to be self-aware about the vibration. You have to understand this is just a game and you have to play the game just like your president is. He has been to the darkest places on earth, so he knows where to tell the Galactic Federation they're hidden. There is a mass, mass incarceration going on in this planet right now. We are holding those accountable that have held earth prison for thousands of years. They're being held accountable. We're making sure they do not leave planet. We are making sure that everything is contained and if you need to hide behind a mask so that you are not seen as someone who disrupts, then look at it like that. This is a way for me to hide my lights and fill this room with light. Do you want to be the one person who doesn't wear your mask and become a target? You see where it's like your ego belief systems versus your mission? What is your mission on this planet? Start following it. Start playing the game to beat the game. When you stand out in a group of 100 people without a mask and try to voice your opinion, you are terrifying and triggering other people based on your belief system or 
you could do an inside job, wear a very funny mask that represents your inner child or your funniest humor, create a lots of fun conversations around the mask that you choose and spend the entire time sending light and love to everyone. Remember your incognito as the second coming. There's parts of your consciousness that you're probably gonna wanna hide it's why you don't have eight feet wings attached to your body right now. It's why you're not 12 feet tall, right? So remember the game you're playing, you guys. And this whole little beef that you have with these little tiny rules, look at the bigger picture. Look at your opportunities and your challenges. Look for your possibilities in your limits. Look for an opportunity to bring joy and harmony in a dark situation versus bitching about it, okay? All right, let's see. Michelle says, this is my last question, guys. Um, Barbara, Christina asks another one. Christina asks another one. Vanessa, you guys, I'm gonna have to get you on Saturday, okay? Uh, matter of fact, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think Michelle, I'm gonna, I really wanna spend some time on yours, Michelle, because it's about a tracking app. Um, so I will answer, starting with Michelle, I will answer the completion of this, uh, these questions on Saturday. Now you'll notice with each question, as I was kind of tapping into myself, watching, listening to myself, there's a consistency of the message here, you guys. There is a common thread and a common denominator out of every question that was, was asked. There was an answer that all fit into, hopefully, the frequency messages and codes that you were getting from me, because this was a triple layer conversation. There was an answer happening in physical reality. There was a communication cycle happening in non-physical reality. And there was light language happening in the ethers. So regardless of what you got from this, if you got triggered, good, okay? If you, if you found relief, awesome, okay? It doesn't matter to me. It all leads you back to love. It all leads you home. It all leads you back to oneness. So what I wanna recap is find a home. I don't care if it's within yourself, whether you go rent a space, where you go move into with someone, heal your energy around being homeless right now and work on creating major abundance. Go to all the places that you want to go, go do all the things you wanna do. You gotta wear a mask, use it as an opportunity to make someone laugh, brighten someone's day with the flowers that are on your mask or and send lots of love and light. Because when you get caught up in the stories of this planet, you get lost in the matrix. When you move above the stories and you're not bypassing here, you move above the stories and you see your opportunities in the challenges. You are a child, find your opportunity in the challenge. Find the game and the songs and the long car rides. Find the opportunity to spread light in the darkest of spaces. And if you have to go in hiding, go undercover. You will raise your vibration so far and fast, you won't have to deal with this very long because time is in the essence of alignment. Time has nothing to do with you waiting. Remember, we don't wait, we practice, prepare and play. We are holding ourselves accountability to our alignment of our hopes and dreams, moving into a world that we choose because you're not waiting to find out what's gonna happen. I truly don't even believe there's going to be an election. We're going to find out some things about Biden very quickly that are gonna be very disturbing. So as soon as that happens, he will be out and all things will just move forward because there won't be time for an election and we will move into status quo and move into new alignment as the systems continue to fall because the Galactic Federation of Light is in every porous of this earth. We are in every tribe, we are in every city, we are in every corrupt job, we are in every corrupt government, we are in every corrupt bank, we are in the IRS, we are in the homes, we are in the doctor's offices, we are in the insurance agencies, we are on the farms, we are here, you are not alone. We will help you, you are not alone. Remember who you are and bring assistance to the ones who have forgotten. Be the example of light. We support you. We have the world built. Your probability that love wins is 99.9%. .9%. It is you who chooses the rest. It is you who chooses the vision of reality that you spend the rest of your space and time in creating. You are creator. We are here. 
We are supporting you. You have never been alone. You have had to face tragedy because you have had to learn the coordinates and understanding of the darkness within yourselves. You have had to heal yourself back into light. You've had to go through the process. It takes you knowing your full cycle of light and dark in order to become master. We will be here through the end of this corruption. You will remain and rebuild the planet. We are here for this war. You will be here after. We are here now. We have always been here. We will end this together through love, through awareness, through personal responsibility, through self-acceptance, through last lack of judgment, through integrity and honor of yourself, through the healing of your inner child. We will be here until you may step into the role of the guiding light and act as us. We will see you on Saturday for the completion of this perspective. All right, guys, I got to run. I love you. See you later.